Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the uh, afternoon session of Talk 2 for Pi Data Global. Uh, we have today with us Myrav Ben Itzak. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, so apologies, Myrav. Uh, she is a senior data scientist based in Tel Aviv. Uh, and for the last five years, she has done uh, some varied analyses as part of her MSCs and as well as her side project and work. And today she's going to be discussing storytelling with data, uh, taking us into some EDA, some narratives about data. So go ahead, Myra. Hey everyone, thanks for joining into my talk and thanks for your patience through the technical uh, difficulties. Uh, my name is Myra and today I will discuss storytelling with data. So quick hello before we deep dive into the topic. So hi, my name is Mirav. I'm a data scientist, been in the past five years. I have a master's degree in bioinformatics. In my spare time, I sometimes write blog posts about data related topics, which you can find on Medium. And fun fact, I'm also a contributor on Shutterstock and Getty, and you can find some of my photography there if you're curious. So, in this talk, I want to share with you insights and tips for a successful uh, exploratory data analysis. But before we dive into that, let's talk for a second about how I got into the business of storytelling with data. So a few years ago, in my first position, I felt that my visualization skills in Python were not as sharp as I liked them to be. And I also felt that my exploratory analysis skills were a bit weak. So I decided to start this side project where I will find a data set, dig into it, visualize it with Seabone and Matplotlib. And that way I could exercise exploratory data analysis and also get acquainted with those libraries. So I planned that the outcome of this project will be only a Jupyter notebook on my GitHub, which I can later show in interviews to possible uh, employees, uh, employers. But eventually, this project became a successful blog post on Medium and also a talk in PyData Global, which is today. And uh, there will be another talk about this where I will present my analysis uh, results in PyLadies London next month. And obviously, you're invited. So just a small uh, word about uh, the data set I analyzed. So um, my data set was taken from the UN. Open data, which is a source I highly recommend. And um, it had two tables, one for countries and one for continents, where each table had three columns, country, year, and the percentage of female in parliament in the given year, in the given country. So let's say my little anecdote inspired you to start a similar project. Where do you start? So the first thing you should do is find a data set. And I suggest you choose one properly and take into consideration several factors. So the first one would be time. So the more time you have to dedicate to this project, the more complex the data set you choose could be and the opposite. Uh, the second thing is, what tasks do you like to perform on this data set? Would you like this to be a data wrangling um, exercise? Do you want to do visualizations like I did? So if you want to do only visualizations and analysis, then I suggest you take um, a pretty much well-organized data set in advance, uh, which is what I did. If you want to do wrangling, then you should check, like take one that has several tables, et cetera. The third factor is which methods do you like to apply on it? Uh, would you like to do pandas? Do you like to do uh, graph algorithms with your data? So if you want to do graph algorithms, I suggest you choose a data set that is already in the format of a graph or that can be easily turned into one. Uh, if you want to do um, other things, then you should choose the data set accordingly. And last but not least is interest. And you can know if the data set is interesting to you if you have lots of questions when you look at it. Um, if you found a data set that is suitable according to all factors except for interest, I suggest you keep looking because it will bore you and you will probably ditch the project or that it just won't be as fun as it could be if you choose one that is perfect in all aspects. 
Second is I suggest you pre-process. So even if you want to spend a minimal portion of your time on organizing the data, I suggest you don't skip this part. So in my case, I was interested in the temporal patterns of female representation in parliaments worldwide. Um, so the first thing I did was convert my data to a time series format, as you can see in this slide, um, which made it very easy for me to not only look at the patterns, but also deep dive into specific years, see the difference between um, decades, etc. cetera. Um, other options for rearranging could be uh, converting the data to graph format, aggregate, meld with other data sources, um, et cetera. Use your imagination and have fun. Uh, so now that we have the data set and we have it organized, we want to dive in. And I think that exploratory data analysis should be approached with a brainstorming attitude, which means that no idea is stupid and every idea is worth looking into. Now, obviously, I don't suggest you polish every idea to, you know, to the maximum. But if you have an idea, try it out and see if it's an interesting lead. If not, you can ditch it. So uh, my suggestions to you are uh, try out ideas instead of negating them in advance. Um, play with different ways to analyze and explore. So this will include playing with different types of visualizations. So sometimes when you visualize, even if you visualize the same thing, like the same data in different ways, then it sometimes sheds light on different aspects of the data and tells you different things. So I do suggest you try out different types of visualizations. And again, don't negate the defense, any idea you have. Um, and also try playing with different methods to analyze. So this could be um, descriptive statistics and basic histograms and line plots. And it could be advanced methods we know as data scientists, such as clustering, graph analysis, and stuff like that. Um, if I could summarize the slide in a few words, it would be make this exercise your playground and just have fun and try things. Now, a really important thing to do that is sometimes overlooked is put some effort in making things pretty. So here I put two figures of the same data plotted, but on, on the same way, like it's both line plot in matplotlib, but on the left side, it's the result I got after just plotting with the default settings of my problem. And on the right side is what I got after uh, tuning in and playing with the size and like digging into the documentation of this package. So I learned that you could play with um, the colors and uh, um, you know make the line bolder. And I also played with the font size and type. And I also added the grid in the background, which is nice. And last thing, I plotted the legend so that like I played with the um, figure size in a way that the legend does not come above Asia as it does on the left side. So it didn't take me too much time. It did teach me a lot. And I think it made a really good impact on my figure. Like it made it far more appealing and informative. So I suggest you do that too. Um, so this is pretty much like I said before, but I suggest you also explore new ways to visualize. So the story behind this figure is that I clustered subcontinents to learn more about patterns of representation, but I didn't know how to present the results of this analysis visually. Now, I had the same issue in my master's degree as well. Uh, I often did clustering on bacterial uh, data sets, and I never knew how to visualize the output. So I decided to use this opportunity and figure out a solution to this problem for once and for all. And after looking at images of clustering results on Google, I stumbled upon this package called Network X. And eventually, I put my results to a graph format where the continents are the source and the cluster number is the target. And then I was able to do this nice visualization you see here. Now, this little adventure gave me two things. One. It brought me a way to visualize clustering results finally. And it brought to my awareness that idea that graphs can be used for data science, which I wasn't familiar with till that point. So again, exploratory data analysis is all about exploring. And you should not only explore your data, but also explore new 
methods, packages, ways to use existing packages, uh, new ways to visualize, sky is the limit. Okay, so this one is half a tip and half a request. Um, numbers can get you to some point, but for a complete story, you have to also work with text and qualitative facts. And I'll give some examples. So in this figure I plotted, um, on the left, the countries with highest representation, and on the right, the countries with lowest representation of women in parliaments in 2019 in percentage. Now, um, one important thing to notice in this example is uh, draw attention to the numbers. So if you will look on the left side, then the axis, the x-axis values are from zero to 60, and on the right side is from zero to seven which could be confusing due to the size of the you know, bars, but it's really important to notice. And this can be highlighted through text. Also, on the left side, you can see um, that Rwanda, Cuba, and Bolivia are the top three in representation, but they're not only top three, they're also the only countries in the world with majority of women in their parliaments. And um, on the right side, interesting things to see is that um, in Yemen, there is over 0%, but less than 1%, which is, I think is interesting. Now, so the first thing you should do is draw attention to the numbers, and then you should ask, what can we learn from those numbers? And I suggest you think about questions these numbers evoke. So for example, in my analysis, I was interested to know, how did Rwanda, Cuba, and Bolivia reach such high representation? And also, what can we learn from them if we want to replicate the success in other places. And on the right side, why is there such low representation in Tuvalu and Kribati? And also, um, what do we think about Yemen having more than 0% but less than one? So this can invoke a really interesting discussion on whether it should be a minimal um, percentage of seats taken aside for women, um, if we want them to be able to also do things like, what is it like to be such a minority in such a masculine parliament? Is it effective? Is it uh, worthwhile, um, et cetera? A uh, last tip I will cry out for you is please don't keep things to yourself. So the first thing I suggest you do when you're done analyzing the data set is put everything in a repository on GitHub, including code, data, and a readme file so that the people who stumble upon your repository can see what you did, and um, this does uh, a lot. I highly recommend that you also write a blog post about your analysis due to several reasons. First, the world deserves to know what you learn as well. Uh, second, when you start writing, you realize some parts of the story are missing. So it will help you wrap up things and really complete the story and do what I mentioned before, like complete the numbers with qualitative uh, facts and text. And this really completes the thing, brings it like a level higher. And the third reason is that writing lifts up your understanding of an issue, sometimes in several levels. So do yourself the favor of going the one extra mile and um, write a blog post. And after the blog post is done and published, I suggest you also present your analysis in a meetup or a conference so that it will be documented and available on YouTube as well. So that's pretty much all the tips I prepared for us today. The last tip is ask me questions. So if there are any. And just one comment, super interesting, by the way, uh, Mirab, thanks so much for that. Thank you. Uh, I, I totally agree that writing about your findings it can really help to frame the, the the analysis in so many different ways and and forces you to be really communicative and then conscious of your communications i like what you said also about uh sharing the results of of our findings and our analyses um unfortunately it's not always possible um depending on the data sources and the, the client but uh, yeah, certainly in, in these independent analyses, it's possible. And at uh, UN and, and World Bank uh, data repository, I have some really great data sets on there. 
Okay, sorry, there's two Q&As here. Uh, so one thing, so Cody's saying, one thing I struggle with is communicating results concisely to a business audience. Any tips on balancing clarity and conciseness? Um, Cody, do you have an example for the day that you're dealing with and who do you have to explain it to? Probably uh, it's, you know, like executive level people, uh, C-suite, uh, who don't have a lot of time and you need to get this uh, stuff across really quickly. So I suggest to, first of all, choose plots that tell the story immediately, um, if you can. And also I suggest, like, I'm not sure if it's related to the question, but in my opinion, I think that um, you should, you should not assume that they are aware of data science uh, terminology. So I think you should um, adjust um, your vocabulary to people who are not from this field and not assume knowledge, like explain things basically when you say them. Um, another example, another idea is, I think, I, I think a good um, presentation is when you take your audience uh, hand in hand from uh, not knowing anything about the topic to the idea you're trying to bring. So I think you should try using this approach. I hope this is helping. A uh, question from Jeremy, the Python packages used to make these plots, I believe you said Matplotlib, Seaborn, and uh, NetworkX? Uh, sure, so I used uh, mostly Seaborn and Matplotlib. Um, as I said before, I really did dig into the documentation and I looked into different ways of plotting. So this was kind of a, a drawing class exercise at times. So I do recommend digging into this and uh, and then you have a ready code if you need a new figure later. And there was a question before in the chat. Uh, so I put the links to my uh, talk, to my uh, Medium and LinkedIn and everything. Here, I hope you see it. Uh, another question in the chat from Joe. What do you do with large data sets? GitHub is not a good place to store this data. Yes, very true. Uh, I have no idea because I took small ones, but maybe zip or put a link to some place they are in. Like if you took it from some, you probably took it from somewhere online. So you could put a link to where it is. Um, I think when you read me. Yeah, or we'll get your own server. <laughs> uh, question. Question from Eli, how do you balance time and need for exploratory analysis with stakeholders who are very interested in results right away? And how do you emphasize that these results are in fact exploratory rather than precise and actionable results? Yeah, good point. So yeah, I'd say exploratory data analysis at work is a tough issue. I could do a talk only on this. Um, for the type of fun I described here, you should uh, probably do your own projects. Um, and if you need stakeholders who are very interested in results right away, then give it to them. Like don't do what I suggested and then make it a playground, but do like reach the point and just give them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what is true. Yeah, I, I think that's a perennial challenge is, is uh, articulating the value in this type of analysis or the, at the exploratory phase rather than you know, producing direct results for, for clients and, and, um, and bosses. Yeah, but you could also, uh, Eli, Eli, I don't know, um, you could also do um, exploratory analysis on the data you work on um, as a side project for yourself. And if you found something interesting, then share it with your supervisor or stakeholders or whatever, and they will probably appreciate it. And if you don't, then at least you learn something about, you know, coding, visualizing, whatever. So don't uh, hesitate doing it also on the data, even if you're not asked to at work, I think. Thank you very much, Mira. Uh, very, Thank very you for having me.